Hello viewers, Adventure Link here. Um, before I start today's video, I just want to say first off that today is Sweetest Day, so to all the couples, Happy Sweetest Day. If it's also your birthday today, then Happy Birthday. With that being said, today I'm going to show you guys how to replace brakes on a 2003 through 2011 Ford Crown Victoria or Mercury Grand Marquis of any trim. Um, then in this regard, I am putting cop brakes from Raybestos on my vehicle. The part numbers are RC11381P, which is the passenger front caliper and brake pad combination. RC11382P, which is the driver's side front brake uh, brake rotor and caliper, or not rotor, but a brake pad and cal brake pad caliper combination. The rotors are 680110R. <clears throat> a guy on the Cronvic.net forums, or not the forum, but on the Facebook group, named Matthew Tatosian. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. He was the one that referred me to the cop brakes. These are by Ray, Ray Bestis, by the way. So, thanks a lot, Matt. I do appreciate it. Uh, for whatever reason, I found that these rotors only fit the Crown Victorias and Grand Marquis. For whatever reason, town cars and routers have different mounting setups, so the brake, the cop brakes won't work. So, I guess you're SOL. But if you have a 9802 Panther, or Crown Vigor Grand Marquis, rather, I will post links in the description for the cop brakes for your vehicle. With that being said, before I actually do any kind of brake work or most front end work, normally I do have the jack stand under the car, but... In this regard, what I like to do first, I personally like to shake the tire at hold the tire at 9 and 3, 9, 3, 12, then 12 and 6. What you want to do is shake your tire, check for play. And in this regard, you want to check for like loose nuts and bolts, loose tie rods, loose um, lower control arms, wheel bearings. If this is a front wheel drive car or otherwise had a CV axle, you would probably you could probably find uh, play in the CV axles as well. And if you have any problems in this regard, then you'll have to put a jack stand underneath your vehicle and then figure out what happened. So first thing I'll do is shake your tires now. Okay, so after you got done checking both sides of your vehicle, next thing you want to do is take the lug nuts off of your tire and jack it up for real. You have two options. If you happen to have an impact gun with the appropriate size socket, just so you know, either way, it's a 21 millimeter socket. You can actually jack your vehicle up and then take off all the lugs. But if you do not have an impact wrench and you're doing this by hand like I am, what I would do is take off, is bust off each lug one by one. You just want to get it to where you can loosen it by hand. Do not remove the lugs. Then after that, after you get the lugs busted off of both wheels or whatever wheel you're going to do, which just so you know, I'm only going to do this side because pretty much what's on this side is going to be the same on the other side. So after, after you get the lugs busted off of the wheels you're going to work on, then you want to get your vehicle up in the air using jack stands, lift, either drive on or forearm lift. A ramp will not be of any use to you this time, so do not think about using them. As always, after you get done raising your vehicle up in the air, make sure it's safe and secure because safety, structural integrity, quality, the right tools and parts for the right job, and doing the job right the first time every time are all number one. So, so with that being said, get the lugs off, get your vehicle up in the air, get the tire off, and we'll continue. Alrighty, see this nut here? This holds on your brake line to your caliper. This is a 15 millimeter socket. You just want to break this loose because if you try to take it off all the way, it will start leaking brake fluid. So make sure you just break it loose and then tighten it back up hand tight. And you want to do that now. Okay, now you want to take these caliper bolts off. I've already loosened them for you. There's one right there and there's another one back here where my finger is just so you know there it is 
just so you know, these are 14 millimeters. Just as a fair warning, these bolts will fight you every step of the way, so make sure you do have some penetrating oil and or a breaker bar or a pipe on your 3 8 inch ratchet to get the bolts off. So go on ahead and remove the bolts now. Now you want to take off these bolts in the back. Um, one is right here. The other one is right over here. I've already started loosening them up for you. These are 18 millimeters. Just as a fair warning once again, these bolts will also fight you every step of the way, literally this time. I even had to take the ratchet and loosen, loosen them up all the way, all the way, all the way to where they won't loosen up anymore. So make sure you have a lot of PB blaster again, as well as your breaker bar with the ratchet on it, but as or your bar with the on the ratchet rather. You could also get away with a half inch drive ratchet. So go on ahead, remove those two bolts now. Okay, so make sure you do catch the caliper because it will fall down on you. Now we got the caliper off. Let's take a look at what happened on this side. Um, looks like this pad's a little low. It's kind of not stuck now. This pad, on the other hand, looks pretty good, but for whatever reason, it's pretty much stuck to this caliper until I could somehow break the pad off, like with the mallet or a screwdriver or whatever. The pistons look look okay, I guess. No leaks. No other leaks other than when I took the brake fluid off. So, with that being said, we can remove the rotor now. The rotor just pretty much slides off. The new one slides back in. So, go on ahead and replace your rotor now. But make sure you do have your old caliper secured somewhat like this or with this, um, an old coat hanger or something. So that way you don't break the brake line that holds on to it because you will be in for a longer job. So with the new rotor on, I would personally advise that you spray some brake clean on the surfaces of the rotor. Like so. You want to get the back side as well. You will have this shield back here. So what I would do is I would spin this side by hand whilst spraying the brake clean with the other. Go on ahead and clean your brakes now with the brake clean, or your rotors rather, your rotors. From time to time, you may also want to check your brake fluid reservoir. If your caliper was leaking like it was mine for a little bit, just in case. This is especially more so important when you bleed the brakes in. Especially when you have, if your vehicle has anti-lock brakes. Because if you let this reservoir get critically low, then this means that the air will start getting into the master cylinder and your ABS computers and solenoids which will screw with your brakes and the only way to get purge it all out is to take it to the Ford dealer or somewhere else that has access to a Ford computer that could purge the air out of the ABS computer and solenoids for you so in this regard I put the little float down it comes back up I have fluid on my fingers so for right now we are good but do make sure you keep an eye on it especially if you have ABS. With the rotor on and brake clean, we can now start the assembly of the cop brakes. Just so you know, the cop logo here does come off by default. I decided to assemble it already for you guys. It's actually pretty straightforward. The two holes go in these notches here on all the snit and all the uh, latches latch up here, just like this. Do the same thing on the other side. Um, just so you know, this is also 15 millimeters. I've already loosened these for you to show the disassembly. One out like this. And as you can see, this comes apart here. So go on ahead and just remove that other bolt and put this, bra this bracket on your vehicle now. Okay, so I already started the assembly of the cop brakes. Just say no, I've already started it for you guys to show you all how it goes. Once again, that is a 18 millimeter bolt that screws that screws it in. The 
well, mostly final assembly should look like this on your rotors, just like so. So go on ahead and assemble this bracket onto your brakes now. Got the pads in, um, looks pretty straightforward. You pretty much slide the pads into the bracket, into these grooves here, making sure that the little metal pieces stay intact. Also do the same thing to the back, make sure it's flush-ish with the rotor. And that's how you install the pads themselves. So we are gonna come on over to the caliper and we are gonna prep it for installation as well as the pads. Um, I think I may have made an error in diagnosis. These pistons are actually pretty fine and attracted in. The other ones were kind of stuck out, so yeah. I think I may have made a miscalculation on that. Stuff happens. What you want to do is you want to want to get out your brake lube. In this regard, I've got Permatex's Ultra Disc Brake Caliper Lube. What you want to do is you want to lube up the caliper, the pistons, inside here, these prongs. And you're going to have to lube up the, this as well. Make sure you get it all nice and good. Get it all nice and good in your holes and on your rubber gaskets. Go on ahead and lube up your brake rotor now. Okay, so I've got the caliper back on and it's nice and lubed as you can see. I've got the caliper bolts started already. Um, just as a fair warning, these caliper bolts will try to be a pain and fight you every step of the way to get inside. So what I would do is I would make sure you have the bolts aligned in the holes by hand. When you have it tightened in by hand where you can't tighten anymore, start tightening again with your ratchet, which if I said it was a 15 millimeter, I do apologize. These new nuts are, or these new bolts rather are actually 14 millimeters. So go on ahead and tighten your caliper bolts now. And now is going to come the fun yet messy part. Transferring the brake line from this, from the old caliper up here into your new caliper. If you're already busted it loose and then tighten it back up a hand earlier, this should be pretty fairly straightforward. Um, just so you know, it is a 14 millimeter nut. Once again, just as a fair, friendly reminder, go on ahead and transfer your brake line caliper from this old caliper to your new caliper because of the funky way Ford made their brake line terminations. Try and use this part here as a guide. Try and pause the video to make sure that you do get it right into the caliper because if you don't get it right, it will start leaking brake fluid everywhere and you will be pretty PO'd at yourself. Alrighty, so now we are in the process of bleeding your brakes. Um, just so you know, as a quick test before you bleed the brakes, you could have your buddy pump the pedal here. If you see any kind of fluid leaking out of here, if it's minor, try tightening this line up more. Chances are that you didn't tighten it up enough. If it comes gushing out, you didn't install it correctly, or there's some other kind of issue. Thought I'd go over that real fast. Um, just so you know, this bleeder here is a 12 millimeter box wrench. Now how to bleed brakes is that if this is the only side of the car that you're working on, which in this regard, this is what this video is going to showcase because like I said, the driver's side should pretty much R&R &R the same way the passenger side did. So you want to just bleed this side only. If you're doing the front end only, start with this tire and then finish off with that tire. After that, you want to bleed your or break in your brakes. Um, just so you know, I will have a PDF file that Matt gave me. It will be in the video description. But for a too long, didn't read process for street use, I believe you accelerate your vehicle 40 miles an hour, slow it down to 10 miles an hour, lather, rinse, and repeat 8 to 10 times. Give your vehicle 15 minutes to cool down, either by parking it for 15 minutes or drive it on the highway with minimal brake application also for 15 minutes. And if I find any kind of oddity in the driver's side when I do it, I will let you guys know of it and point it out. Okay, 
So the brakes have been bled in, thanks to my buddy Jordan. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, just so you know, now it's time for the final tightening of the tires. You want to put the tire back on after you bleed the brakes, naturally. The, to the torquing order is like this. One, two, three, four, and five. What I like to do when I put tires on is I put the tires on, the, the lugs on hand tight on each lug. Goes start, like I said, start from this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then repeat the process until they're all hand tight. And then go back over with the socket in your hand. And then after that, you use a torque stick or a torque wrench. Just so you know, I do believe the torque spec is a hundred foot pounds so you make sure want to sure want to make sure that you do tighten your lugs down to that specification once again if you have an impact gun you can use your torque stick with the vehicle up in the air or if you don't do not have an impact and you got to use a, a torque wrench then you want to put your vehicle on the ground then torque it and then torque it down this has been adventure link showing you how to r and r your front disc brakes on your front passenger on your front car on the front side of your vehicle on this side for your 2003 through 2011 ford crown victoria or mercury grand marquis and any trim using the ray bestest cop brakes sweet so you're back for more huh well i decided to release some bonus footage anyway just to show you all the carnage on the driver's side just so you know like i said it did r and r the same way pretty much as the passenger side before i do go over with the carnage some i do want to make another honorable mention when it comes to bleeding your brakes i know i already mentioned the brake fluid once before but it has to be said again make sure that you do watch your brake fluid when you bleed like after say you're, after you bleed it a couple times, check your brake fluid. Make sure it's topped off, especially on an ABS-equipped vehicle. You do not want to lo critically lose too much brake fluid because, once again, you will have to find someone with a Ford computer to hook up to your car to purge the air out of the ABS solenoids and the computer. And it will be very hard to drive on the way there. Anyways, I think I may have traced back some of the source of the noise. Uh, first off... I'm not sure how good this looks. It's still turned without a problem. But I'm not real sure how good this looks, but whatever. Um, next off, I see that the rust has started to eat away at the top of this caliper. Or the rotor, rather. Sorry. Rotor. Um, inside the rotor looks like this. And pretty much the caliper had the same syndrome as the other side. Um, the pads were starting to get low. This pad is still stuck to the caliper. As you can see, the pistons are stuck out a little bit. So yeah, these brakes had to go. And remember, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, praise, etc. about this video, hit me up in the comments section. If you have any questions about the Ford Panther platform as a whole, which covers the Ford Crown Victoria, Mercury Grand Marquis, Lincoln Town Car, and Mercury Marauder, hit up the crownvic.net forums. Or if you need immediate assistance and have a Facebook account, search on Facebook for crownvic.net. Subscribe to their group and post your questions. And the fine folks at either medium will be happy to answer your questions in a timely manner. If you want to see more videos from me, be it stances, rants, repair videos, vlogs, quick tips and reviews, and others, hit the subscribe button at the top of this video or any other video that I make. It's not hard. You will be automatically subscribed to any video that I produce. And you can also go over my old videos if you wish. This has been Adventure Link. I'm going to close the video out as always by quoting Eric the Car Guy. Be safe, have fun, and as always, stay dirty. See you next time.